In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Have you ever been truly lost? And I don't mean you make a wrong turn and your GPS says, recalculating. I'm talking about really lost. So lost that you are scared and have no idea where you are or how to get home. That happened to me one time. When I was a young boy, my mom, sister, and I took a walk in the North Woods up in Superior, Wisconsin. And somehow we got turned around and lost deep in the woods for several hours. But by God's grace, we eventually found a road and made it back to my grandparents' house. And then the next day, we found that a black bear had been trapped on the same path we were walking, but it didn't harass us. Often in life, we get lost. Maybe just a little bit, maybe a lot, maybe for a short time, or it can be for a long time. And you and I know people that are lost and don't even realize it. And our text for this morning Jesus has great compassion on the lost. Listen to what he says. When he saw the crowds, he had great compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Now, did you catch that? When Jesus looked out at the people, it says he had great compassion on them. The Greek word here is splagnizomai. It means to have total compassion from your most inward being. It's the same word that's used about the father in reference to his prodigal son. Jesus here is filled with complete love and compassion for the lost. He has deep compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus knows what it's like to be harassed. He knows the enemy. He understands that there is a predator in town, that evil, roaring lion, the devil. He's everywhere, sneaking around, poking and jabbing at God's chosen people. Today, there are still people walking around who feel confused, harassed, and helpless. They are lost, and many of them don't even know it. They are wandering around in the darkness, looking for a glimpse of light in their lives, but they end up looking for light in all the wrong places. That's why you and I know lots of people that are lost. They are people for some reason or another who've drifted from the church. Some have drifted because they were bored. Others because someone didn't agree with their opinion or offended them. And then there are those who have used situations in their life as an excuse to take a week or two off church and soon and slowly stayed away more and more. So today, you and I can learn from Jesus' command to his disciples. For he says... The harvest is plentiful, and the labors are few. So often we think that this only applies to pastors, and it does apply to pastors, yes, but it also applies to all of you. You and I have been called to share the good news of Jesus Christ in a kind and loving way with those who have heard God's word but have become lost. Someone did it for you. And now it's our chance to share the hope we have with a hurting world and pray Christ's love forward. We are called to shine Christ's light out into the darkness so that the Holy Spirit may guide them and restore them in the one true faith. Now let's admit it. This is not always an easy task. But we should be humbled that Jesus uses sinners like you and me in sharing the gospel with others. 
You see, he loves us enough to let us play in his plan of salvation. Now, depending on the people that are involved, the process might start with forgiveness. Maybe there are some underlying hurts that need to be forgiven. Maybe we have to help them through the huge struggles in this life before we invite them to church so that they can appreciate the love and compassion that Jesus feels for them. If you're looking around and thinking, I wish someone was here that is not, start with prayer. Ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance in reaching out to the lost loved ones you have. Many of us would love for our brothers and sisters, mom or dad, children or grandchildren, to be here today worshiping with us, receiving God's good gifts of salvation. So now is your chance to compassionately help them. I encourage you to lay those lost ones at the loving feet of Jesus today so that they can receive God's forgiveness, our forgiveness, and the love and compassion that they're probably longing for, even though they may not know it or admit it. As most of you know, it's Father's Day today. So happy Father's Day to all you dads. But some of you here today may not be able to spend time with your father. Or maybe you're a father who won't be spending time with your kids. But we're reminded that our Heavenly Father is constantly with us, always seeking to call us out of, mar and out of darkness into his marvelous light, just like he did for Callie this morning. And that's why I think it's so neat that Andy and Carrie have chosen to have Callie baptized on such a special day. Andy, you've taken your role as a father serious and have given the gift, a great gift, that you could give your girls. And that is to have them baptized and raised in the church. And today, we ultimately give thanks to our Heavenly Father who chose Callie in the waters of holy baptism as he looked at her and said, you were lost, but now you are my child. So here's your one takeaway. Things really haven't changed all that much in these 2,000 years. The kingdom of Jesus has come here today, but there's still a world of people out there who either haven't heard or have rejected the good news of what Christ has done for them. You and I have been called to be the disciples that go out and share the hope that is within us. For Jesus says, Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. You've heard me say this before. It's not just my job to bring people in this church. It's all our jobs. I church you and you church the world. For the reality is, I will never be able to reach out to all the people that you know. So pray that God will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit to compassionately share the good news of Christ Jesus with all those who are lost. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.